Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and all-around evil scientist, meteorologist DT from weatherist.com, the commander of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your captain of catastrophe, and an all-around snappy dresser. We'll be talking a lot of weather here coming up this week. Obviously, we've got this event for the weekend, which is not really a Virginia, Maryland event. It's more like to the north, but it's important nonetheless. And uh, then we have the Arctic outbreak coming in and then more Arctic outbreaks and even more Arctic outbreaks. So uh, let's get to the Arctic outbreaks. So the first map here, this is the uh, first call map. Now, this is um, uh, the one here. um, And uh, I posted on the Facebook page. This is the large version of it. Um, it's just focused on the Northeast. There's an area missing in Pennsylvania, Virginia. So uh, the, the second image here, this is the one with the correct image on it, where there's moderate to moderate icing over Northwest Virginia. That is to say the Northern Shenandoah Valley, South Central Pennsylvania, uh, the suburbs of Philly, and then into New York City and Central New Jersey for a little bit. So some icing in that area. Um, not as bad as the icing more inland, but there'll be some icing there as well. And that'll alter their snow totals, especially in South Central Pennsylvania. And uh, some snow and some ice up in Winchester and Martinsburg is the real possibility. But for the most part, uh, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, this is not a big, big event of West Virginia. All right, so uh, here, this is a map here will take us to show us where the track of this is going. This is the 12 Nam. And you can see that the low goes from Arkansas to Tennessee into, Virginia, into Central Virginia. And that is, this is just not a good track for uh, the Mid-Atlantic region. It's really a great track for Illinois and Indiana. It's northern Ohio, northern Pennsylvania, New York State, interior New England. But um, for the Mid-Atlantic region, even the coastal cities into New York City and, and, and Philly, not great. It's not even that great of a track for Boston. I mean, it's better than nothing. They've had very little snow in Boston so far this winter. But still, this is not a great track. Um, and so it's it definitely an inland Appalachian, you know, Pennsylvania, Adirondacks, northern New England type of deal. Uh, this image shows uh, the temperatures forecasted from the NAM for 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. And the blue line is the 32 degree line. So everything north of that is cold enough to support frozen precipitation when it comes in on Saturday morning. And we can see that here. Uh, we're looking at the uh, rare images from the 12 Z NAM. We can use this. The 18 Z NAM is not much different. Uh, you can see the precip breaking out by 10 a.m. in West Virginia, moving into the Panhandle, the Shenandoah Valley, and the temperatures are cold enough to support some sort of frozen precip, at least for several hours. All right. This is the uh, now this image here uh, is at noon uh, Saturday. You can see uh, the snow is breaking out. Actual snow in the eastern Panhandle of West Virginia, Martinsburg, up into Western Maryland, and then snow and rain mixed in much of the Shenandoah Valley, maybe as far east as Dulles, but definitely Leesburg and Ashburn. Culpeper, Warrington, Stroudsburg, Front Royal, Harrisonburg. Areas when the precip is coming down hard, it'll be snow, and when it's not, it'll be mixed precipitation or mixed with rain. Uh, by um, 2 o'clock, uh, 4 o'clock, we can definitely see that the system has definitely uh, coagulated here. You can see more steady snow in Martinsburg and the East Virginia Panhandle at 2 p.m. And then you have mixed precipitation in portions of the Shenandoah Valley and then rain as you get closer towards east of the Blue Ridge and the Virginia Piedmont and D.C. and Baltimore and what have you. And then by 9, uh, let's see, then by 6 in the evening, we can see that the rain snow line is now pushed Pennsylvania north of the turnpike by 8 p.m. We still have some pockets of sleet and freezing rain in the Shenandoah Valley. You know, the orography here, orographic uh, geographical features here, really an, an issue for the northern Shenandoah Valley and western Maryland, keeping the ice in play there for most of the day on Saturday. Now, if you, here's, this is an interesting situation, and I, I'm going to use this to show you the difference in the snow accumulation maps. And you weather folks out there, you weather weenies, weather hobbyists, you need to take this in consideration. So let's take a look at this slide. Now, this is the 12Z NAM showing total snowfall. So this comes out, everybody runs to tropical tidbits. They go, wow, a foot of snow in New York City? Wow, a foot of snow in Philly? No, that's not what this is showing. That's not what this is showing. I'm sorry, it's not. Okay, it says include sleet. Okay, and sometimes that's a big deal. Now, if you take that at the, at the other image, the one that nobody likes to look at, that has no sleet in it, you get that. Oh, uh, is that one inch or two inches in New York City? One inch in Philly, nothing in D.C. Even the suburbs of southeast Pennsylvania, not much going on. Uh, Pitt, uh, Baltimore, uh, Boston, not much. A lot of ice, a couple inches of snow. So that's a big difference between that and that 
you got to keep that in mind, especially in these sleep situations like this. You really, really do. All right, by uh, by uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, you can see the 32-degree the line is pushed to the north, and a lot of the precipitation here has gone over to uh, plain rain. Now, one thing that's interesting is the HRR, the experimental run. Now, some of you may know about this. It goes out to 36 hours. Let's take a look what it's doing here. This threw me this for a while. I, I couldn't figure out what the model was doing here. So this is the HRR at 1 o'clock on Saturday and 4 p.m. And what happens is that the model has so much precip and it comes down so hard, it forces the mixed level out. So it's going to bring snow all the way down from 850 millibars down to the surface. So by 4 o'clock, we have a snow explosion going on in western Maryland and the northern Shenandoah Valley and Martinsburg and Winchester and Leesburg and down towards Harrisonburg, where it's coming down really heavy. And when it's not, it's mostly rain. Notice that in this image of the 4 o'clock, you see the, uh, on the right-hand side, there's very little sleet or freezing rain here. It's either rain or it's snow. And that's because it's either coming down hard enough or it's not. And when it doesn't come down hard enough, the low level temperature is above 32, 33 degrees and you're getting rain. And look at this image by 7 p.m. Boom! I don't think this is right, but it's something to keep in mind here. Uh, that is a uh, significant, uh, you know, potentially significant looking snow here in far northwest Virginia up Winchester and Leesburg and, and in Martinsburg and then over towards Hancock and, and western Maryland. If it's coming down hard enough, again, no other model has this, so something to keep in mind. I'm not going with it, but, you know, I'm a little worried about that if it comes down hard enough. All right, slide, this next image here shows us uh, the winds. Now, this is 900, I think 900 millibars, so it's about 1,000 feet above the ground. This is Sunday early in the morning. Now, one of the reasons why the temperatures are going to take off Sunday morning, you have a look at these winds, you look at the orange colors. Okay, that's 55, 60 knots in gusts. All right, really strong winds, 1,000, 1,500 feet above the ground, bringing up the warm air. Over Virginia, most of Virginia, you can see east of the Blue Ridge, Maryland, and Del Del Delmarva. And as a result, we see these sorts of temperatures. This is 4 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning. It's near 6, 55, 60 degrees in the eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia. Big temperature difference there. Now, when the front comes through, and it does come through, this is what happens on Monday morning. Boom! Yeah, it's 14 degrees in Richmond, no snow on the ground. That, that's pretty impressive. 10 in D.C., 12 in, in Charlottesville, uh, 7 in Hot Springs, 13 in, in uh, Roanoke. And you see the sub-zero readings in Pennsylvania and New York State and northern New Jersey where they've got the snow. So that makes a big difference. These numbers in Pennsylvania may actually be a little too warm. And also in Ohio, if they have that much snow on the ground, they're going to be probably a little colder than this. All right, and to give you an idea of what this looks like, here is the uh, temperature readings from the European from uh, midday. This is so all the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic, you can see it. This is the Arctic outbreak, stretching from Minnesota down to Virginia. This is the first one. Pretty impressive, not the biggest one of all time, but, you know, it's pretty, pretty significant. All right, now what happens after this? Okay, everyone knows we get cold a couple of days, begins to warm up because we have another system coming in here. Now, this is January 24th. We have a big low. You see this developing over Mississippi on the Florida Panhandle. You can clearly see this. And let me call up my mark here so you can see the fronts and everything because this is kind of important. So here's your low pressure area right here. There's your front, cold front. Here's your warm front like this, stationary front. Now, this is all south winds driving the front northward. All right, here's the next Arctic high over here. And you have another little one over here. So the issue is, where is this low going to go? Is it going to go to Hatteras? Yeah, big snow. Is it going to go to New York City or Pennsylvania? Big rain. So that's what we have to worry about. And I, I'm sorry to say this one's going inland again. This is not a snowstorm for a winter storm for us. Now this slide shows that the European on Thursday night has it over, well, close to Roanoke or maybe a Bluefield. Uh, Beckley, West Virginia, you can see it's well inland. Strong south winds bring up the warm air. A lot of heavy snow in the Ohio Valley again. This is a big snowstorm for the Ohio Valley, the eastern Great Lakes, if this is right. And then maybe the Appalachians, because look what it does. Um, and of course, well, when, when it does that, let me show you what happens to the temperatures. Look at these temperatures. Again, early on Thursday morning, we're on near 60 degrees over central and eastern Virginia, North Carolina. You're in the 40s in the Shenandoah Valley, D.C., up into Pennsylvania. Look at Pennsylvania, even, even, even the Poconos is above 35 degrees here, according to uh, the European. Now, the low goes from, let's say, West Virginia, right up the spine of the Appalachians to Burlington, Vermont, maybe Montreal. So that, if that's true, that would be rain even for Boston. 
I just it's just what's going to be if that's correct. Now there's going to be a lot of speculation. Notice also upstream here we have another Arctic air mass coming south. Let me point it out so you can see it right here. See this baby? There you go. 1045 millibars. But this low. Now the question is, oh, can it come east? Please, can it come east? I don't know. Okay, but I'm telling you, the upper air pattern does not support that. You're going to see a lot of speculation. People, other meteorologists, other social folks, media, uh, and, and Twitter trying to tell you that it could come east in a big snowstorm. I already saw a couple of tweets about that earlier today. That's Bravo Sierra. That's just Bravo Sierra, folks. And let me explain to you why. This is the upper air pattern here map on January 23rd, the day before the storm. So what we're missing here is we have no 50-50 low. If we had a big 50-50 low centered right here, okay, with a big giant low like this with a lot of contours around it, this low prairie here would have to force it safe to the south. We don't have one, so it's just a trough. The trough goes neutral over the Mississippi Valley, and then it comes up the Appalachians. There's no 50-50 low. That's why that low is so darn important. I keep telling you about it. It's a big deal. You got to have that 50 50 low there in southeastern Canada. Otherwise, that's just, that sucker's going to come up the coast or go over the Appalachian Mountains nine times out of 10. It's just the way it's going to be. It's the weather patterns in North America in winter. You got to have that 50 50 low. I didn't make the rules here. I just got to tell you what they are. Okay. Uh, so then on January 24th, look again, look at the warm air surging northward from Florida all the way into Pennsylvania. Now we have another big Arctic air mass coming out of Canada, but we have to wait for it to pass. All right, so now the Arctic front blows on through. This is January 25, 26. You can see the enormous Arctic high coming south right here. Look at this monster. It's a big Bertha right here. You can see right there. Look at that baby. Now, we do have an area of low pressure. Uh-oh. Right here developing on the Arctic front. Could this be something? It could be. We'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, it might be an Arctic wave. We'll have to see what that looks like. Uh, that might be something to watch develop. And, but again, and it does develop. And in fact, the uh, European, this is day nine now, what it does is it takes that system, it amplifies it, and it goes ballistic over the Ohio Valley. Again, the, up the Appalachians for the third system in a row and bombs it out over the Appalachians of West Virginia. Now, this is a blizzard for Detroit and maybe for Pittsburgh, if it's a little further east, but for Cleveland and maybe for Chicago and Indianapolis. That's what this is. This is a blizzard, if this is correct. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, stop, stop. If this is correct, that's what I said. Okay. And there's your Arctic high. And there's the other one over here. Now, could this slide further to the east? Yeah, it's possible, but something's got to change in the pattern to shove this further to the east again. Now, uh, so this could be snow to rain in the Mid-Atlantic and to ice in New England, but um, that's what this is. This Right now, this looks to be an inland runner as well. This would be the third one in a row. I know it's frustrating. We'll see, maybe. Again, this one I don't think we have a shot at on January 24, 25. This one might shift further to the east. Now, after it blows on through, look what happens. The polar vortex comes down and goes, hello, America. I'm the polar vortex. I haven't been, haven't been in a while. I'd love to see it. And you can see this enormous Arctic air mass. Um, again, if, if you can't follow this along, there's the Arctic high, the middle bar is right here. And you see this dark blue right in this area? That's the polar vortex. It's come right out of Canada. Again, look where it was just a few days before that. Okay, this is January 23rd. This is January 28th. See what happens to the blue? Boom! Comes rushing southward into the Great Lakes. This is extremely cold air. The weather models are underdoing this. This is exceptionally cold stuff. And it's going to set records. It's going to be the talk of the newspapers, the media. Everyone's going to go crazy over it. Polar vortex, we're all going to die, blah, blah, blah. No. Okay. It's not, but it's impressive cold nonetheless. The fact that the media hypes it doesn't mean it's not important. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive. Okay? All right. This is the day 10 pattern, jet stream pattern. You can see the enormous ridge on the west coast going all the way up to the North Pole, the Arctic region, way up in here. See that? Huge trough over the Midwest East Coast. And then you see the cold air plunging southward. Look at the 850 temperatures in this area. My gosh, that's impressive. Minus 20, minus 24, brutal, brutal stuff here that's coming, really. To show you how cold it is, look at this. This is Sunday morning, January 27th. Now, Richmond's 35, but look at Indianapolis, minus 17. Chicago, minus 19. Des Moines, Iowa, minus 26. Good googly moogly. St. Louis, minus 20, 17. Kansas City, minus 22. 
Nashville minus six. Are you kidding me? And that Arctic air, you can see the boundary is racing eastward right here. Okay. Now, here's the thing. This is interesting. Look what happens to this. This is an enlargement of this. Okay, so this is January 27, the Mid-Atlantic region. You can see the Arctic boundary here. Now, normally, this is 7 a.m., okay, on the 27th, on the, right? So there's the front. Now, temperatures are going up, right, because it's daytime. No, not with an Arctic boundary. Uh-uh. I'm an Arctic boundary. I don't play by the rules of physics. Look at this baby. 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the temperatures are going down because our front has collapsed. Here, 27 degrees at Roanoke, 7 a.m. There, 5. During the daytime, when you're getting max heating. That's an Arctic front. That's an Arctic front. Okay? All right. Look at this. Morning of January 28th. Look at these temperatures. Zero in Richmond. I'm not kidding you. There you go, Richmond folks. Uh, minus 5 in uh, D.C. Uh, minus 15 in Pittsburgh. Uh, minus uh, 13 Roanoke. Minus 6 in Charlottesville. Minus uh, 16 in Columbus. Minus 12 in Chicago. Minus 24 in Des Moines, Iowa. Minus 17 in uh, St. Louis. Minus 22 in Kansas City again. There you go. Nashville minus 9. Atlanta 3. Asheville minus 14. So there you go. Pretty impressive. That's if you want to look at it in enlargement. You can see it with a little more detail here. Very impressive temperatures on potential on the morning of the 28th. And, the, and, you, and, and wait, wait. There's one more thing. One more thing. I want to show you this here. You're going to love this. Now, remember we talked about the winds on the Arctic blast, the 28th? See those high? Look at these tremendous winds. What does that do for our wind chill? Oh, you're going to love this. You are going to love this. Look at these wind chills on the morning of January 28th. Minus 55 degrees in Iowa. Are you kidding me? Minus 48 in, De in Champaign, Illinois. We're minus 20 below zero in Richmond, the wind chill. In Richmond, the wind chill. Minus 40 in Pittsburgh. Minus 45 in central Ohio. Now remember, a lot of us grew up with wind chills. And remember like 10, 15 years ago, they changed all the wind chill tables. They found out they were too extreme. So this is the new stuff. This is not the old wind chill table. This is the new stuff. So that's pretty impressive, Colt. And to go longer out, uh, here we go. This is uh, January 30th. The Arctic blast is still in place. No sign has not let up at all. And finally, uh, this here is the extended European. This is February 3rd. Huge trough on the east. Monster Ridge. Getting some blocking. Finally developing over Greenland in this area. Finally. And maybe that might make a storm. And indeed, there's some hint of that. But the point is, even through February, look, another Arctic outbreak coming. Just as big as the one coming next week. So, yeah, we've got some serious cold coming down the pike. There's no doubt about that. Uh, now, some would be arguing, hey, it's too cold to snow. Now, that's not really true. What happens is that when the vortex comes this far south, when it comes that far south, the jet stream, is, as you can see in this slide here, is way down in this area. So that's where your storms are. So it's not really too cold to snow. I mean, it's kind of a misnomer. I understand what you're saying. What it is, the, the jet stream has been displaced so far to the south all the storms are to the south, so it comes. It looks like it's, quote, too cold to snow. Anyway, that's where we stand. This is meteorologist D-Team Weather Risk. I'll catch you on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page.